Okay, welcome back for the project setup and instructions on how to get it from the SVN server I host here locally for the Enterprise Framework training. This will be the project we use from now on and it's actually got the source code from the previous videos in it so you can tinker with it. Uh, question would be why haven't I done this one earlier and the answer is I didn't know there would be a demand for it and it turns out there is a big demand for the source code so I'm giving it to you. Uh, so here's how you get it. First of all, get an SVN client for Visual Studio 12 or 13 or whatever you use. I'll be upgrading to 13 next week. Right now I'm still using 12, but I'm getting ready to build my new supercomputer Skynet, and when that gets done, uh, 13 is going to get installed. But for now, uh, you need to do two things. I put it in the uh, links, but you can Google it, and you need to install the, the tools for Visual Studio 2012 for Entity Framework 6.0. 0.2 I think they call it. Uh, the next then it's in the if you look at the other videos it's in the comments the link. Uh, install those tools and then start Visual Studio and then what we need to do is install Visual SVN that's the one I use. You'll have to install Tortoise SVN first and then install Visual SVN. I think it costs like 10 US dollars or 15 but my goodness is it worth it especially if you're going to keep watching my videos uh, Visual SVN is what I use uh, it's it's amazing so I'm going to show you how to get it you, Visual Studio has just started uh, I don't have anything hidden no cards up my sleeve it's just an empty empty uh, window you're going to go to Visual SVN we're going to go to get solution from subversion now I'm going to copy this because that's not the link you're going to use. The link you're going to use is the outside the firewall link, which is http bortel dot dns dojo dot com colon eighty one and I'll let you look at that link for a second before I move on. That is the external SVN link. You'll see uh, that you're prompted for credentials. The login and password are both lowercase chi as in Charlie Hotel Indigo chi password and username. And here we're just going to call the project you name it whatever you want EF6 training or whatever. I'm just going to call it since I already have an EF training I'm going to call it sample. Now this isn't going to work for me because it's inside the firewall so I'm going to change it so that I can show you what your experience is going to look like. Now I probably won't be prompted for a password either. So I'm behind the firewall. I need to give it the server name. But it, like I said, your username and password is both CHI. And it says subversion has checked out successfully the specified directory. There's our project I'm hey okay and it will bring down the project you know you got all green lights you as CHI have read only which means you can tinker with it all you want on your local machine you just can't commit the changes if you'd like to be an admin on the project think you want to add something just email me directly or uh, obviously I want you to subscribe to my YouTube channel so subscribe to the YouTube channel first and then send me a PM and uh, with your ideas and we'll get you added to the SVN server. Okay, so now we've got this down. There's two things to think about here uh, that may happen to you. The first one is we're going to hit build and everything works beautifully. That's what I hope happens. But if you build and it doesn't build because the Enterprise Framework 6 isn't here, because if you don't have a NuGet configured to automatically uh, pull down packages that are missing during a build it won't do it but I'm gonna hit build and I'm gonna build the solution and see as we're storing NuGet packages listed in the packages.config which is this file here and the build has started the build succeeded how did it know to go out and get any framework 6 well it's got this packages.config and it knew enterprise 6.0.2 to go out and get it if it was missing as a reference to this project, which it is, because when you check it in, it doesn't check in your NuGet stuff. 
uh, interesting with SVN, but it doesn't do any of that. So uh, on the whoever checks it out next time, it goes back out to the SVN world or uh, Nougat world and gets gets the deal. And if it didn't build for you, just simply right click, go to uh, Manage Nougat Packages for the solution. Make sure nougat.org is selected, Entity Framework, and click Install. And go through its paces and then close the window. And it'll build for you. The question is, now that we've downloaded it, notice the database, customers.mdf, is here. The question is, will it run? Let's find out. Uh, let's just try the DB function here, which is just going to grab the customers and their average function. And it runs. And you might think that's kind of weird. Why? Well, let me show you the app.config. If we look at this data source, it's using the local DB and it's setting up the data directory. So it knows to look for a data directory and a, a file called customers MDF. So it's using something in SQL 2012 Express uh, called local DB uh, to interact with that database. Our model, if we look at our model, it's the same as we've seen in others. Uh, we've still got the model browser, store procedures. Notice there's a store procedure called select clients now. Uh, I'm about to do a video on that, so stand by. Uh, but I wanted to put this one together first, a little short one to show you how to get the project and uh, use it, tinker with it on your own. Now, when you CI release a new video, it'll always be here. So what you'll do is you'll click your solution, you'll right click, and you'll go to update. You hit update, and it'll say what it did, and you'll say okay. And if I add projects or do anything, it'll bring them down at that time. Again, right click, nothing to it. So hopefully this video helped. You can get source code. If you're not able to get source code, let me know. Uh, you can email me directly. But like I said, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and send me a message through YouTube. And I will get back to you just as quickly as I can, usually within one to two hours U.S. daylight time. Uh, so thanks for watching.